welcome between the covers. For book lovers, that is. I'm Rob Brown. And I'm Mia Zachary. We are so excited to take you between the covers of some great books. Today's show is going to be a little unusual because our special guest author is... You. Me. <laughs> Mia is an award-winning novelist, trademarked inventor, and the author of Entrepubbing. I'm going to show you how to go from an idea to a first draft in only 48 hours. I can't wait to hear more. And you're going to roll us a story later there, right? I am, but first I want to hear what your precision word of the day is. It's a good one, I promise. Oh, great. Well, we'll be right back after this. Hey, smart shopper, stop paying full price. Join the Consumers Win Savings Club and stretch your dollars every time you shop. Joining is simple. Just go to ConsumersWin.com. That's ConsumersWin.com and join our community mailing list. You'll start saving on deals right now. You can also get a Consumers Win Savings Club card to carry with you. What a great way to save money and help small businesses in your community to grow. Start saving today. Get the details at ConsumersWin.com. That's ConsumersWin.com where you will master the art of shopping smart. Hi, and welcome back to Between the Covers. Now it's time for a segment that we're going to dive into. It's called Precision Word of the Day, where we pick a word, give its definition, and then we talk about how we use it in everyday language. Today's precision word is esoteric. Esoteric means requiring or exhibiting knowledge that's reserved for a small group. Now, how would you use esoteric in everyday speech? You can say something like, I was watching the TV special last night about the universe, and it appears to me that astrobiology is a very esoteric side of astronomy. Esoteric. We'll be right back after this message, and I'll be interviewing Mia Zachary. You want to stick around for that. Hi, and welcome back to Between the Covers. Today, we have a very special guest. You may know her. You may have seen her before. <laughs> she is an award-winning novelist, a trademark inventor. Her name, Mia Zachary. Mia, good to have you here. Good to be here. <laughs> <laughs> I was kind of here already, but nice to be back. Good, good. So you are our first guest. You are a writer. I am a writer. OK. I am a writer. Tell us about how you started out writing. Um, I would say probably when I was about five, when my baby brother was born. Um, there were always books around our house. Um, my parents were the first on either family to go to college, so um, there were books everywhere. As soon as you walked in the front door, there was a bookcase because we ran out of room everywhere else. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, books were kind of sacred in my house. I mean, like you never bent the spine, you never dog-eared the pages, you never put a book on the floor. Um, so I always had great respect for books, and then of course story time, you know, at bedtime was my favorite time of the day. And I think that I just, you know, have always had a great imagination, and it was just natural for me to start writing stories for my baby brother. So that was my first book. Uh, I remember I, it was crayon drawings of uh, dinosaurs, and uh, I had made up a little story to go along with it, and my mom folded it for me and stapled it together. Um, and the one thing that really meant a lot to me was, um, oh gosh, I want to say maybe 20 years later, I was looking through some of her things and she kept that all that she time. She kept those books? She actually kept my little dinosaur drawings for my brother. <laughs> wow. Wow. Now your brother, obviously he was younger than you. He wasn't able to read them until a couple years later, right? Yep. I have two younger brothers. Uh, one's five years younger and one's ten years younger. Okay. Do they have a love of writing too? or? No, actually. And uh, neither one of them are readers. Really? Yeah. It's like a genetic mutation. <laughs> just <laughs> just they're, happened they're with me. They're the black me. sheep of the family. Okay. <laughs> exactly. Okay. So you, you write fiction books, correct? I do. I do. Um, I've published 10 books to date. Seven of them were fiction. Three of them were nonfiction. Wow. Wow. Tell us a little bit about the writing process. I mean, do you just... Do you just kind of sit down and start writing, or do you think about it for like a couple of weeks, or like how's your process? Well, first, Rob, 
the voices start in my head, okay. and they tell me to do things. Okay. And I do them. Yeah, I know a specialist <laughs> that can help you with that, but go ahead. <laughs> no, actually, um, that's actually how my characters come to me. I, I hear them talking inside of my head, and um, I usually pick um, celebrity photos to go with them so that I know what they look like. And they'll just tell me about a situation and that's usually the start of, of any story. Um, the first book that I was uh, published in 2003 by Harlequin Romance, and I was on the train going to work in Baltimore, and I was just sitting there daydreaming out the window, and in my head, I saw a woman standing at the bow of a, a cruise ship, and it was leaving, and you know, there's the confetti and the champagne and everything else is going on, and I just had this sense that she was really lonely and that she wasn't supposed to be taking this trip by herself. And that ended up being the very first scene of my first book. Wow. Yeah. So you're just kind of inspired like that? Yeah, I, I, I see, well, I, I actually do hear the voices first. I wasn't joking about that. And then I see things in my head like a movie scene. like, uh, And um, I actually choreograph the scenes as if I was directing it. And I do all of that before I write a single word. Okay.